it's, it's, it's exciting. It's the first time I've ever been out in the United Arab Emirates. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys what it's like at this conference, the people who are here, and also kind of generally the attitude towards blockchain in Dubai, because it's, this is one of the objectives of what I wanted to do um, on my trip here, is to see, all right, are there a lot of money moving into this place? Well, are, what, what's your attitude towards there? And what are, what's the style like? And you can see one thing that is for sure, it's, it's very hot here. So I'm walking to the conference right now. And it's very apparent that there's no ICOs here. So are you guys surprised <laughs> that there's no Hello. ICOs? Hey, how's it going? This conference is, um, I think it's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Amazing people, mm -hmm. good projects here. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's great. It's literally connecting the, the ecosystem. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's more, um, it's a bit more informal. So it's a bit more authentic. Yeah. Of course, one of the main reasons to go to conferences is to listen to new ideas. In the following segment, I'm going to tell you guys two of the main concepts that I learned from the Futurama conference. So Mito, Miko Matsumura, he had an interesting view on this Bitcoin bubble debate. And it's been a long debate. Um, we've been hearing about it for almost the past five years. Even in 2012, it was like the word bubble kept springing up. Even when Bitcoin was $10, like Bitcoin bubble. So then what, how, what's the best view to, way to view it? And I think Nico said a very important point. So people tell me that Bitcoin is tulips. If it's tulips, the graph of the value of Bitcoin should be going to infinity, crashing to zero, and staying at zero forever. And this is clearly not the case with Bitcoin. In fact, Bitcoin has died multiple times. It's went up, you know, to a thousand, to ten dollars, to a thousand dollars, dropped down, two hundred, three hundred, and it went back up again. So what would be a better word to describe that? And he was describing and um, viewing it as a um, kind of a balance of sand, a pile of the sand pile analogy, where you keep piling sand up, it forms a pyramid, and then there's a sand slice shh, when the value drops, and you keep building on top of it again. And he described the reason for this, which is that we're kind of testing Bitcoin as a store of value. Because if you want to test something for a store value, you got to put money in and take money out. So I think that's a great way to view it. The fact that Bitcoin, some people put money in, the value of Bitcoin goes up, and then take money out. We're testing it. Is it a good store of value? Take money back out. Well, yeah, it still held its value, then it crashed to zero. Let's put money back in again. Point number two, and this is about ICOs. So we always viewed it as initial coin offerings, um, kind of like um, people have accused us that it's a ripoff of the um, name IPO, the initial public offering. Well, in this argument, Brock Pierce said, well, we got that wrong. It's not the initial coin offering, it's the initial community offering. And this is a point that I was like, immediately, that is so true. Because when you form a coin, you really form a community around that coin. And this is something that's very apparent. You saw a very strong Ethereum community, very strong VeChain community, very strong EOS community. All these are communities and people really love particular coins. And in fact, products and dApps and even exchanges, they have their own coins too. And that really represents the community as well. One of the best examples for this is Binance. So I did a video on Binance very early. So this is before it really got hot in um, overseas. So it started off as a Chinese project, people, Chinese project, people found out about it. And a lot of people were coming to my channel saying, you know, we're the Binance community. Look, this exchange is really cool. Talk about it. And, you know, I'm, at the start, I'm very apprehensive about talking to, about exchanges because I'm not sure, you know, especially after um, experiencing my gox myself, you know, I'm not sure if these exchanges are secure or not. But People kept pressuring me. People said, oh yeah, look at this evidence. Look at this. We've been trading on that. And, and then, of course, we got um, CZ and an appointment to talk to CZ. And um, this was a time where I thought, okay, why not? Let's give this guy a shot. So it was the community that really got CZ to come to my channel, bridged it all together, and it really helped Binance grow. And that's when I saw the power, the community forming power of a coin. So this idea that you're offering a community away, that's very powerful. And it's the blending of the lines as well, because right now, this kind of, it's a merging of those lines between a community and of course, a shareholder and a product user. 
it's really coming together. And Binance is a clear example of that. That being said, there's still a lot of confusion that people think, oh, a coin is equity. That's not, you don't get any ownership of a company and the rules are very different. But that being said, if a coin dies, if the community dies, the project dies too. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this mini recap of the Futurama conference and the learnings I had from there. I hope you um, make videos a little bit faster. This one came up a bit late because I was trying to piece these clips together and didn't know how to you know, glue it all together. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that Futurama is going to start a second conference soon, so I'll put the link down below. And of course, if you guys have any recommendations for conferences, well, why not comment below? I'll try to check them out and show you guys what's there. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Remember to click the like and subscribe button if you like this mini recap. See you guys next time.